Hello friends, welcome to this sacred space. I'm going to begin our time together today by lighting this candle, which was given to me with these words, and I pass them along to you. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. And I don't mean to start on such a dour note, but I do find myself in a place of um, letting go and saying goodbye. And so I'm going to, I think, repeat myself. I'm pretty sure I've shared this before, but it's worth saying again, especially in light of um, things that are going on in the community in which I serve. I serve a cooperative that consists of three churches. And at this moment in time, one of those churches is leaving the arrangement effective August 31st, so right away. Um, and in addition to that, one of our parish administrators, we have two, um, one of them is leaving. So again, it's, it's a time of leave taking, it's a time of letting go, a time of saying goodbye. And so I would like to share with you some wisdom that I came across 10, 14 years ago. I'm kind of lost track now. Uh, when a hospice physician told me about a book that he had read by another hospice physician talking about that transition time and the importance of four different movements as as you're coming to grips with the death of a loved one. And I'm going to apply that to this. It's a death of relationship, a death of the way things have been for a number of years. And it is a, a saying goodbye. So I'm going to share that with you again, and hopefully that will be helpful to you. And I know it's helpful to me to revisit it. Um, but before I get into that, I would like to share these words from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. And remember, I mean, Rome, the people in that church were going through some difficult times, you know, and I, I think that we can consider the place that we're in right now and, you know, with, with COVID and the politics and the things that are dividing us, you know, in our communities, the things that we face, we can feel like, you know, our very, very souls are being tattered and torn and we're not quite sure where, where to go. Um, the people in Rome were like that too. Uh, they were being persecuted for their beliefs, for saying that Jesus is Lord. And Paul was simply trying to encourage them and to say, you know what? God is good. God will see you through this time. And so this is a portion of his letter to the church in Rome where he's He's really giving some really good one-liners of, you know, here are some things that will help you, you know, as you face these difficult circumstances and you seek to truly love one another as God loves you. So I'm going to begin, um, this is in chapter 12, beginning with verse 9. Listen now for God's word to you. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all. The word of the Lord. 
So I share that grocery list with you, if you would. <laughs> this discipleship grocery list. Um, simply because I think it, it fits well with this wisdom about how to, how to say goodbye, how to take your leave in a way that leaves peace. You know, that's a thing that we say so much, you know, in the Lutheran liturgy is peace be with you. And to me, this is a way, a method of embodying that, of being able to leave and leave peaceably, you know, to live at peace with all. So here they are. Um, the first is simply um, gratitude. To sit for a moment and think about um, the relationship that is, that is now ending, and to name the things that you're grateful for. For the church that's that's leaving this arrangement, you know, I think about that and I think about the people that I've met there, that I've come to know there, that are salt of the earth kind of people, just hardworking and and decent and truthful and, and all of that. And I'm I'm grateful for their witness to the gospel. I'm grateful for the ways they welcomed me personally into their fellowship. And I guess I'll leave that there. Um, so gratitude, to just take some time and to sit with gratitude for this other, um, for it could be a person, it could be, as I said, you know, this church. Um, and if it's difficult, because the leave taking has a lot of tension involved with it, some hard feelings, some pain. It's okay. You might not feel grateful. In fact, the thing you might be grateful for is, thank God the relationship is ending. <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> but to find that place within you, that place of gratitude, to be able to give thanks to God. Be who you are. So the next movement then, after gratitude, is to move to forgiveness. So that might be where this comes into play, if there is some pain, where there's some hard feelings. But to both ask forgiveness and to offer forgiveness. So for myself, with relation to this church, I could say um, that I would seek forgiveness for the ways that um, that I was not available to them, for the ways that I, um, you know, the sins of omission, um, you know, that I, I wasn't helpful to them in ways that were needed and necessary. You know, as their pastor, I did not provide adequate leadership to them. And I'm sure each person there could come up with an instance of that. And I do sincerely seek and ask forgiveness for that, for the ways that, that I've let them down. And I can also um, offer forgiveness for the ways I've been hurt over the course of our relationship, things that people have said that I took the wrong way that I took personally that um, I don't know if the, you know the other would have intended it to be to be mean or helpful criticism or who knows what you know but there are times when I'm not at my best and I hear things and I think oh, great um, but the reality is we're human so I can extend forgiveness to those who I perceive have wounded me, have hurt me, and I do, I do ask God to forgive them. So the next movement is love, expressions of love, which will be probably kind of similar to gratitude. 
Um, but I'm thinking about like in a hospice situation with a family unit to be able to say to the other, I love you is something that's, that's very meaningful at the deathbed. It can be very meaningful in the ending of this relationship with this church as well. To simply say, you know, you are my brothers and sisters in Christ and I love you. I care for you. I have deep compassion for you. I want you to be well. I want you to live your best lives. So to have some sort of expression of, of love, appreciation, of affection for the other, compassion for the other. And then the final thing, so it's gratitude, forgiveness, love, and the final thing is simply goodbye. And again, in a hospice situation, to say goodbye, to, you know, let the other go, to give that person permission to leave, to say goodbye, um, which again is, is a modern version of God be with you, goodbye. So to actually finally say that is, again, to allow peace to enter into the separation, to allow the separation to be bookended by peace, surrounded in peace, as you say goodbye, which I know I will do on Sunday when I preach at that church for the final time. I will say goodbye and God be with you till we meet again. So, that's the little bit for today about leave taking and the many forms that that takes, you know, whether a person is dying, leaving this earth, or whether a relationship is simply ending. Um, hope it's giving you a little bit of food for thought, and I do hope that peace, the peace of Christ, will be with you. Thank you.